Hi guys, welcome to this week's demo. This week I wanted to share ideas with you for creating bokeh or bokeh creations. Um, in case you have no idea what bokeh is or what that means, I'm going to show you that's this. This kind of technique where you have like the little circles and you might have them in different tones, um, but it kind of creates like an interesting background and kind of has an interesting kind of feel to it, like almost like it's kind of whimsical or kind of magical. So of course I love that kind of stuff because I love everything magical and whimsical. What I love about this paper is even though it's from a winter paper line, you can see these tiny little like shine marks throughout the whole paper and just makes it so you could do with like mount like fairies on it or butterflies or like a nice sentiment, like believe in the magic. Like there's lots of different things you can do with it. So that's what we're going to be working on today is creating bokeh or bokeh creations. All right. So my first, I'm going to grab my craft mat here because we're going to be using some inks and I don't want to get my background here all dirty. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I had, um, earlier this week, I had a little class I was doing where we were cutting out some circles and that was, this is what we ended up with some leftover um, mirror card that had different sizes of circles cut out of it. So I was thinking, well, you could use this as a stencil, especially if you're creating like a bokeh background kind of an idea. So, here we go. So let's get started here. So since I have a little smudge here, might as well start with an area that I can use the little, where the smudge actually gets uh, colored in. I know the background of this is red. Just go with me here. Okay. So I'm going to use three different colors here. I'm going with the festive berries, dried marigold, which is kind of an orange and wild honey, which is kind of an orange yellow. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start with the lightest color, um, with the dried marigold, interestingly enough. And I, since I have the circles over the entire page and it happens to be the same size as my sheet of paper here, I'm just going to line this up here and I'm going to take my, these are my blending brushes. The blending brushes are actually brushes. They just have, they have bristles in them. It kind of looks like a foam, um, but it is a brush and it's really great for picking up ink and then you can just kind of brush it across the surface here. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's not very much ink that's going down. And that is true. There's not a lot of ink going down, but it's amazing that you're already able to see some of these little circles, even though we're not applying very much ink at this moment. All right. And since this is a very light color orange, I have to kind of buff in the color quite a bit. And since I'm trying to go over that one little smudge mark on my paper here. I'm going to kind of make this a little bit darker in that one little area and we'll just apply ink across this entire thing, creating this kind of circly bubbly looking background. Okay. So that's what we end up with. That's pretty cool. All right. Now I'm going to take the same stencil, flip it over and upside down, and I'm going to go in with a different color and I'm just going to work light to dark here. So now I'm doing wild honey, which is kind of like this beautiful yellow color. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a little bit of overlap here in some areas. And it's just, again, kind of doing like layering with circles. I, for whatever reason, I'm really into circles these last couple of weeks. I'm just, I like all the different ideas of things you can do with circles. It just makes me happy. All right. So now have, you already have this really interesting kind of effect and you have this kind of tone on tone where you have the brighter yellow and then that lighter orange. And I love how it kind of overlaps a little bit. It's kind of cool. All right. And then we'll do one more and I think I'm going to go this guy. And now we'll do my darkest color, which is the festive berries, which is the red. And I'm just going to brush that across here. And what's nice about the blending brushes is that you really don't need a whole ton of ink to create the effect we're going for here. So you can may even just use the ink that's already, that's, you know, if there's a little bit of ink left over, um, I mean, we're all obviously working in the red and the yellow and orange tones, but sometimes I pick up my blending brushes that I haven't cleaned and there's oftentimes enough ink on there that I can just quickly go right into um, stenciling and it already, and it creates a beautiful stenciled image. All right. Okay, now let's do the reveal. Ooh, isn't that so cool? So I just love that background. It's just really fascinating and interesting. So I played with this, this concept earlier before the demo, and this was the one that I came up with. This one's a little bit lighter color, but it's this exact same idea using the exact same stencil. We're just moving the stencil around upside down and backwards. But this one, I started with the red and then did the orange and then did the yellow. And here we're moving light to dark. So you can kind of create some different things based off of how um, hard you press your brush down and also how much ink is on your brush. So that's the, that's the basic idea for creating a bokeh creation or bokeh background. Okay. 
All right, now let's start playing with some other ideas. Okay. So, I don't know about you guys, but I have like a ton of hole punches. I have this one, which is like half an inch. I have a 16 inch, an eighth of an inch, and I have uh, roughly a quarter of an inch. So, my thought here, I'm gonna have, I have this, um, background here that's gold and so I'm going to use all these different colors of paper here to just pop out little circles um, for a fun little creation so I'm just going to do two of my half inch and then I'm going to do probably three of the quarter inch and we'll do a couple of the eighth inch for what I'm doing here, I'm not going to be doing um, any of the 16th inch because that little hole trying to cut that out and then trying to find it is just going to be really difficult. So I'm not going to bother trying to do that. Um, and then we'll do some here. We'll do a couple golds. We'll do the same number. We'll do three of these guys. And we'll do a couple of these guys. Okay. All right, so now that we have, oh, one of them, I might as well just do a black too. So again, we'll do two of this guy, three of the quarter inch, and two of the eighth inch. Okay, and I don't know if you saw this, but I actually did this on purpose, where it kind of created like a fun, like, little design here and I did that with this one and this one and we're going to come back to that in a little bit because I'm going to show you why I'm going to use these okay all right so now we're going to put this on the paper and I really like the idea whoops I'm missing a couple there we go I really like the idea of kind of putting them in like a fun like little design much like this so that way you're kind of creating this little scene that we have going on here so you're kind of creating movement right so I want this to go right onto my paper here so in order to do that I'm gonna use washi tape that I know is not very sticky and if you collect washi tape you probably know that there are some washi tapes that are extremely sticky and some that just really are not very sticky so this is one of those that's not very sticky um, sometimes people are like well you know what what can you do with washi tape well this is one of the things you can do with not very sticky washi tape we're going to pick up the circles in that order, flip them over. Then I'm going to use my glue to put glue on the back side here. Just a tiny little bit on those little itty bitty ones. And then I'm going to stick them onto my paper where I want my little dots to go. So I want my little dots to go right here. Then once you stick those down, because the washi tape is not very sticky, I can just peel that away and my dots stick. So again, this is a very light adhesive washi tape. So this actually works out really well for what I want to do. So I'm going to do, because I did a black, I need to do a black somewhere else so it doesn't look so awkward. Like why do you have black there but then nowhere else? So we're going to do this. I'm going to cut out three more of these guys. Actually, I might just do two. And we'll do... do three of those okay all right so once again I'm just gonna lay this on my craft mat or you can lay this like on your counter or on your surface where wherever you're working on in your desk and then we'll get these little guys here again we're kind of trying to create like some movement here and I'm keeping the same distance between each dot even though the dots are getting slightly smaller once again, I'm going to press this on here, lift up my little dots, put some glue on the back side of those guys, and stick this down. Okay. All right, and then we'll just remove that. Whoops. That guy glue, his glue did not dry properly. There we are. See? So then they just kind of stay in place, which I really like. Okay, so now I want some different colors here because I, I chose a kind of a light gold background. So I'm picking two other shades of gold. So I have my yellow gold over here and then I have the mirror card gold here. Okay, 
We'll apply it just a touch more glue on some of those ones that weren't sticking very well. Since those sizes, we want to make sure it stick nicely. And I think I'm probably going to do this over here. Just press those in place. When I was doing this earlier and I was using extremely sticky washi tape, I found that when I did this and I peeled this up, that some of the paper came with it. Um, just like the top layer of the paper, you know how that happens with tape and paper. Um, so I was really happy with um, the light adhesive washi tape, even though I generally don't use the really light adhesive washi tape. I figured like, you know what, this is actually a great way to use it because if you just need to lift something but you need it to stay in the same place, this is a great way to do that. All right, and once again, I'm gonna kind of do like a little squiggly movement kind of a thing here. All right, I'm happy with that. And we'll apply some glue. All right, and then we'll do this guy. Itty bittiest one did not stick as well as I wanted with the glue, but that's all right. For the most part, that technique worked. Okay, so there we have just one idea for a cute little background. Um, and then you can go in with any extra little papers that you have left and just kind of pop out some miscellaneous kind of random shapes, and that will just kind of fill in the rest of the space. And I'm going to do this out of gold. And I'm going to do some out of the yellow. And we'll do some here. And then we'll just kind of put these kind of here and there. I want to make it like at least kind of um, asymmetrical in a way, if I can, where I'm not putting all the gold in one spot. So that way it kind of balances out just a tiny little bit. Okay, so there we have kind of a cute little idea for laying those out. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue down. And it's just kind of, you know, it's fun to play with circles, but also just kind of creating a kind of a whimsical kind of magical background. And I love these little trails that kind of come in because it just makes it a little, a lot more interesting. Okay. All right. And there we have our gold and yellow creation. Gold, yellow, and black, I guess, creation there. Okay. All right, so that's the next idea using the that kind of idea with like the, the background, making a little book of creations there. All right, so there's another idea for you. Okay, now let's talk about, remember this and this that we cut out and I told you we're going to be using that. All right, so that leads me to this next idea. Okay, so I'm using three different colors of Distress Ink here. Well, two colors of Distress Ink and one color of Distress Oxide because I wanted to use that color. So we have Dusty Concord, Seedless Preserves, and the Dust Distress Oxide Wilted Violet. So three different shades of purple there. And then I want to use this background because I really like how this looks. However, I'm working in the purple tones. So in order to move out of the purple tones here, or move out of the blue tones, so I can work in the purple tones. I'm gonna grab a blending brush here. Oops, it's that one that's not covered in color already. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some color here. I'm gonna do the background, and I think I'm gonna use the Wilted Violet because the Distress Oxide ink stays wetter a little bit longer, which makes it so that I can actually apply a nice soft background and I know that um, the color is going to stay wetter a little bit longer so I can actually move that ink around. Okay. Now I still have a little bit of that kind of bokeh look on the background, but I want the whole sheet to be purple. Okay, that was really what I'm going for here. I want it to be purple instead of blue. So we're just gonna recolor the entire thing. And I still have a little bit of that purple, of that blue background pattern showing, which I want. I want that background to still be there. And you can very lightly see it, okay? So you definitely have that there. All right, now I'm gonna take this, okay? This little trail kind of a thing, right? And I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna use this blending brush again because I have it here. Oh, actually, 
I'm going to use a little itty bitty guy that I have, a little tiny blending brush. I'm going to go in here now with a different color and I'm just going to color in these little dots. And so this ends up becoming a stencil. And I chose a little bit darker shade of purple for doing this, so then that way it would show up. And see, isn't that cool? All right, and we'll do the same thing over here. All right, so we just, again, it's just kind of interesting, something a little different. Have them go off the edge of the paper a little bit. Okay, and we'll do some up here. All right, oh, I got a little bit of a couple lines there and there, but I'm okay with it. All right, so now I have this cute little jar here. And so I want to adhere the jar in place here. So in order to do that, I have my cute little butterflies I cut out. And I know it's, you can't see them very well here, but it's supposed to be kind of like a magical, kind of whimsical kind of a scene. But I want to color these just a little bit darker. So I'm actually going to pull out this other color, the Seedless Preserves, which means a little bit more pink. I'm just going to colorize my butterfly just a little bit. And oh, I'll make all these butterflies kind of different colors here. These butterflies are not all exactly the same. I'll do some darker colors on some of these too. Just make them stand out a little bit. And then I'll leave some of them light purple still. Okay, so once we have our little butterflies colored. Alright, we're done with the inks for right now. Okay, so now this is going to be my background paper here. Actually, I might need to get an eggplant. I'm going to do a darker color a little bit later. Okay, so now then we can go ahead and we can start adhering our little butterflies in place. And so I want some of these butterflies to be on the outside here. And again, I know you guys can't see those light ones super well, but we're just going to go with it. And we have some of these ones here. And then I'm going to put some kind of like inside the jar. Ooh. It's not going to be, I can't see that very well. Huh. Maybe I'll not do the jar, even though the jar is really cool. I think we'll leave the jar. I do like that idea, but I think I'll pass on it. That way I can kind of focus on my little butterfly creations here. And we can just scatter the butterflies all over the page. And it looks like they're flying around. And it's just exactly what I am going for, which I just love. And I have a really nice sentiment that I want to use with this. Let's see if I can find it. It says believe. So I'm going to go ahead and just ink that up right now. And stamp it over here. believe in your magic and your whimsicalness. I need even pressure on this. I'm sorry. This is the unofficial way. I'm just trying to get even pressure on my stamp here. There we go. Okay. All right. And now I can glue down my little butterflies. All right. And we'll put this little guy up here. I'm just putting glue just in the middle of the butterfly. So then that way it can, I can give it at least a little bit of dimension there. My little butterflies flying around. All right, and we'll do this guy here and we'll do this guy down here. All right, so there we have kind of a cute idea for kind of creating an interesting background. Isn't that fun? I just love the background here. And then I know it's very, very subtle, but then you have the very light, light blue background that still kind of shows, which I really like. Okay, on to the next idea. Okay, so let's say, again, I'm going to use this blue sheet here again. I need to clean background up. We'll just go with it. Okay. So then I have this blue background again. So my thought for this guy is let's again, let's, we're going to try and like, I'm going to bring in some different colors here. So I'm using peacock feathers 
and I'm just gonna brush on just a little bit of this color because I want to kind of create a little bit more of a turquoise color palette here. Again, all the bubbles are still seen or the little back, the bokeh background is still showing. But now what I want to do is I actually want to um, create a bubbly kind of looking um, design here. So I'm inking up my stamp. This is an Alon Fawn stamp set. It came out from the two releases ago and it's um, called Bubbles of Joy. And I love it so much. You have a little mousy and this is make your day be filled with bursts of joy. It's so cute. Isn't that adorable? And then I have the little the bubble wand here. We'll put in his little mouse paw. Isn't that so stinking cute? Oh my gosh, I just love that. But I want to incorporate more of this um, turquoise color here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my little blending sponges here. And because these are already circular, which is perfect for this, we can just go in here and just add some little bubbles. And the, the lighter that you push, the smaller the little bubble area is. But it just kind of fills that space up and just kind of, again, all the colors kind of go together, which is really, really nice. And we can even take some of our little creations from earlier and use our sponge here and kind of create some different sizes of bubbles. You can press, have, you know, press hard or press soft, but then you can kind of create these cute little bubble, like, um, little rows of bubbles here that are pretty cute too. Isn't that fun? And I'm just gonna add one more right in here. One more little grouping of those. Whoop, that bubble is a little bit awkward, but that's okay, we made that work. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I just love that. All right, I got a couple more ideas here for you guys. Okay. So, oh, did I have another idea? Not that one, that one, that one. Oh yeah. So here, what I'm gonna do on this guy, and again, this is much kind of using the same kind of concept, but I really like tone on tone things. And so here I'm gonna use two different shades of Distress Oxide, Squeeze Lemonade and Wild Honey. And I'm just gonna pick up some color here with a small blending brush and I'm able to kind of go in here. Oh, apparently. Well, there's some green on my brush. Well, we're going with it. Actually, I really kind of like how this is turning out, even though I did not intend for there to still be green on my brush. We're going with it. In that case, I'm not going to use the wild honey with this because that color doesn't really make sense for this. Kind of go in that kind of color. And, oh, I might as well do some blues because the blue and yellow together is kind of fun. And I'm sure you saw I did not clean my brush before I went into the next color because there wasn't very much ink left on my brush. So, but these make just really cute in quick little stencils, which are really fun for just adding like a little bit of fun kind of background kind of here and there, which again, I really, really like. Okay. All right. So anyway, it's just kind of a fun idea. And again, it's just kind of cute to just kind of a, a quick way to just kind of make a fun little background, but also just to kind of add, you know, some joy and some happiness into your little creation. Because, you know, these little bubbles, the little bubble rows, they're kind of fun. I don't know about you guys, but they make me smile. So anyways, just kind of some more ideas to share with you. I'm gonna do one more grouping over here. All right, so there we have it. Hope you guys had lots of fun at today's demo. I uh, loved sharing all my different creations and ideas with you, and I hope that you were inspired. So you can take a circle stencil and create some bokeh creations, but also you can make little bubble scenes or you can make a cute little magical whimsical scene with your butterflies. So there we have it friends. Thanks for coming to today's demo. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.